a quick review of what we just did. The equation of the budget line imposes an implicit relationship between x1 and x2. Given prices and income, if my total expenditure is to be equal to my income, then I cannot choose my level of consumption of good 1 and good 2 as I like. My choice must satisfy this implicit relationship. We can make the relationship explicit by solving the equation for x2 in terms of x1. This demonstrates that once I have selected how much to consume of good 1, I must then consume precisely this amount of good 2 if I want to be on the budget line. We can also make the relationship explicit in x1 and then it looks like this. Once we have made the equation of the budget line explicit in x2, it is simple to make a graph of the budget line. We start from the implicit equation. We make it explicit in the variable that we choose to draw on the y-axis. I want to draw x2 on the y-axis, so I make the relationship explicit in x2. We see that the explicit relationship is a linear function, so the graph must be a straight line. The intercept is equal to m over p2, and the slope is equal to minus p1 over p2. The intersection with the x-axis must be at x1 equal to m over p1. We can find this result by setting x2 equal to 0 in the implicit relationship and then solve for x1. P1 X1 equal to M or X1 is equal to M over P1. This is a very important graph that you should try to memorize. Memorize the formulas for the intersections with the axes as well as the formula for the slope. As a quick review, here is the example again that we started with. P1 is 2, P2 is 3 and M is 6. We solve for X2. We see that the intercept is 2, which is precisely the value of m over p2. The slope is minus 2 over 3, which is the value of minus p1 over p2. Finally, the intersection with the x-axis will be at x1 equal to 3, which is the value of m over p1. Before continuing, let's quickly review some results for linear functions. For this slide, I will go back to general notation using x and y for arbitrary variables. We start with an arbitrary linear function where y is equal to ax plus b for some constants a and b. a is the slope and b is the intercept. The derivative of this function, denoted either by dy dx or by f prime x, is equal to the slope a. If y is a linear function of x, then the slope can always be calculated from two points on the graph as delta y over delta x, where delta y is the change in y and delta x is the change in x. Specifically, if x changes by one unit, such that delta x is equal to 1, then the slope is simply equal to the change in y, delta y. Since the function is linear, the graph of the function will be a straight line, intersecting the y-axis at b. In my example, a is positive and the line slope upwards. Let's pick two arbitrary points on the line. For the first point, we denote the x-coordinate by x1 and the y-coordinate by y1. We do the same thing for the second point using index 2. Delta x is the increase in x, or the horizontal distance between these two points, x2 minus x1. Delta y is the increase in y, which is a vertical distance between these two points, y2 minus y1. The slope of the straight line is then equal to the ratio of these two numbers. Keep in mind that this relationship holds exactly for any two distinct arbitrary points on the graph. Let's return to the budget line. We know that the consumption of good 2, x2, is a linear function of the consumption of good 1, x1, if we are on the budget line spending our entire income. We found that the slope was equal to minus p1 over p2. So compared to the previous slide, x2 plays the role of y, and x1 the role of x, so the change in x2 divided by the change in x1 must be equal to the slope minus p1 over p2 for any two points on the budget line. If we increase consumption of good 1 by precisely one unit, 
then delta x1 is equal to 1. The change in x2 must then be equal to minus p1 over p2. For example, if p1 is 2 and p2 is 3, I need to decrease my consumption of good 2 by 2 over 3 if I want to increase my consumption of good 1 by 1 unit and stay on the budget line. This makes perfect sense. Increasing x1 by 1 unit will cost me 2. Decreasing x2 by 2 or 3 will save me 2, since each unit of good 2 costs 3, and 2 over 3 times 3 is 2. Total expenditure remains unchanged. This means that we can think of p1 over p2, the absolute value of the slope, as the opportunity cost of good 1. One more unit of good 1 will cost us p1 over p2 units of good 2. Let's have a look at what happens to the budget line when we change one of the parameters p1, p2 or m. We begin with a change in income m while we keep the prices fixed. If income is increased, then the budget line will shift outwards and the new budget line will be parallel to the old one. They must be parallel since they must have the same slope, minus p2 over p1, which has not changed. However, the intersection with the y-axis, m over p2, has increased, as has the intersection with the x-axis. As an example, here is the budget line for m equal to 6. If m increases to 8, there is a parallel shift outwards. The new intersection with the y-axis is now 8 divided by 3, or 2.67 something. The new intersection with the x-axis is 8 divided by 2, or 4. Let's see what happens to the budget line when we change one price while keeping the other one as well as income fixed. In the first diagram, I changed the price of good 1, keeping income at 6. Starting from the blue line where P1 is equal to 2, if I increase P1 to 3, the budget line will change to this red line. Note that an increase in the price of first good will make the budget line steeper. The intersection with the x-axis creeps towards the origin. The slope of the original blue budget line is minus 2 over 3, while the slope of the new red budget line is minus 1. For completeness, let's also have a look at what happens when we change the price of good 2. We start from the red budget line where P2 is 3. If we increase P2 to 4, the intersection with the y-axis creeps towards the origin and the budget line will become flatter. The slope has gone from minus 2 over 3 to minus 1 half.